Thank you for being with me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. La Nina and the upcoming hurricane season. What does it mean for the amount of hurricanes? I want to cover that. It's about to change. La Nina itself is about to exit. What the heck is that? Well, La Nina is a global weather pattern. I don't want to get too sciencey with that, but there's La Nina and El Nino, and sometimes in between there's a neutral phase, neither quite La Nina or El Nino. And it, really what that is, uh, El Nino, again, it impacts the entire world. So does La Nina as far as what's going on. El Nino, you'll have really warm water in the Eastern Pacific. That is a sign we're in an El Nino period. La Nina, you'll have a cool down in the Eastern Pacific. That is a sign we'd be in a La Nina period. With that said, well, what does that mean for our weather? How does that global weather pattern tie into this upcoming hurricane season? Well, this is where we stand and this is where we're headed. Now, this map's a little bit crazy. Uh, I know here's uh, March, April, May, uh, April, May, June, uh, May, June, July, July, uh, June, July, August. So those are kind of some of the symbols you're seeing there. Point being where you see this blue shading, generally where we are right about now, the blue would be a La Nina, a La Nina cycle, right? The red would be El Nino. Well, what's going to happen during the hurricane season right in through here, we're losing the La Nina, we're exiting the La Nina, uh, and eventually down the road, we may start to see a hint of an El Nino coming in that red shading by the time we get toward the end of the year. But in general, you see this gray shading, we're going to be in a neutral phase. So not quite an El Nino, not quite a La Nina as we get into the upcoming hurricane season. Well, what does it mean and what, uh, what does it really not mean? Now, in a La Nina cycle, which we're in right now, but we're about to come out of, typically that means more hurricanes, much like we had last hurricane season. If we're in a La Nina, on average, we get 17 named storms, so those are tropical storms uh, and hurricanes, all of that combined. Uh, of those 17 named storms, nine become hurricanes and four become major hurricanes. You think a hurricane barrel type of situation, category three or higher. In an El Nino, usually there's not as many named storms. El Nino, on average, 11 named storms, five become hurricanes, two of those become major hurricanes. Here's the key though, regardless of if we're in a La Nina or El Nino, uh, these numbers don't tell us where things are gonna hit. That's why I always wanna mention caution. Everyone's about to put out those big hurricane forecasts and they're going to be always, they always are, well, sometimes they're clickbait and they're a little bit scarier than they are. Hurricanes themselves are scary. There's no doubt I do this channel for safety, but if there's a whole bunch of hurricanes out there or not a whole lot, that really doesn't matter. It matters where they go. Obviously, if you have a lot of hurricanes out there, odds are you may get hit by one. The odds would be a little bit higher, but we don't know where a hurricane is exactly going to go until I see something develop and I know what's going on in the atmosphere. And then I'll be able to give you that heads up if something may threaten us, if something may come our way and give you the heads up as well on the flip side, the good stuff. Uh, if something may uh, just not hit us at all. Also, let you know where things are not going to go so you can you can relax. It's a high anxiety uh, time once we get into hurricane season. Now, uh, La Nina and El Nino, I watch that, but there's so many ingredients in the hurricane season. And again, we'll be more in a neutral phase. One of the ingredients I watch are the water temperatures. You see the Gulf over toward the Bay, the Caribbean, the Atlantic, the orange shading right now, and that's telling me water temperatures are running above average, pretty similar to what we had last hurricane, leading into last hurricane season. This tells me we need to keep an eye on early in the season, even before the season starts, which is June 1st, because with very warm water temperatures, we could see something starting to uh, develop uh, out there maybe a little bit earlier in the season. Sometimes that happens. Now, early in the season, we look close to home, especially with old fronts. There's sometimes leftover moisture. I look close to home for development. Uh, later in the season, with the global trade winds, we get tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa, and those start to move across, and I watch off the coast of Africa to see what may try to develop and maybe head our way. Another ingredient on top of just the water temperatures, whether they're warm or cool, and warm water fuels 
hurricanes is the heat content. That is the warm water, but how deep it goes. You see in the Caribbean right now, these yellows popping up near Jamaica. That means the water is uh, relatively warm and the warm water goes down uh, far. So if a hurricane travels over that area, more warm water just churns up and feeds the system. These are those hot pockets, which are not good. Anytime a hurricane or developing system passes over these bright yellows in here uh, of high heat content, that's not a good thing. That usually really fuels the hurricanes. And that's why we could see th something kind of increase quickly. Sometimes we've gone from a tropical storm to category three hurricane in a matter of days. A lot of times it's because of that heat content. No, I'm watching that behind the scenes. Now, as we get deeper into the hurricane season, we really watch off the coast of Africa, but starting as soon as May, as we work our way into June, and by the way, hurricane season again starts June 1st, we get a bunch of tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa. They're not water waves. These are waves in the atmosphere, clusters of rain and storms. 55 to 65 of them roll across the Atlantic toward the Caribbean. And what I do is I monitor every single one to see if it'll develop or not develop. A lot of these don't develop, but occasionally some, if the conditions are conducive for development, they do eventually develop into tropical storms or hurricanes as they work across. So point being, we're going into a neutral phase. You know I'm watching everything. I got you covered. I do this channel for safety, so thank you for taking the time to subscribe. Now, in the atmosphere right now, one front just rolled by Bermuda. Uh, a lot of us waking up to the cooler, chillier weather, Bahamas, for example. And look at this moisture feeding in from the Pacific over toward the Rocky Mountains as well. This is the sign of our next system that will start to develop this weekend. Here's the tail end of that front, that first one that has brought us cooler weather, Bahamas, Cuba, Turks and Caicos, even parts of the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Haiti, and the DR, Dominican Republic. We're a little bit cooler this morning, not a huge difference but a slight difference in spots. Now let's start close and then I'll widen out and show you that next system. Hit or miss showers today, Puerto Rico, for example, a little bit more Guyana and Suriname. Our rain chance has bumped up. So this is today. Let's flip over into tomorrow. Tomorrow, still watching Guyana and Suriname for that increased chance of some of those showers. Overall, an easterly flow, but mainly dry. Antigua, Barbuda, Anguilla, St. Kitts, Nevis, down through Trinidad. Rain chance is not super high. It's not super high as well in Central America. Make it a shower too near Barbados, St. Lucia, Grenada, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, and Trini uh, uh, Trinidad on Sunday. But on Sunday, here we go, watching our next system. This is the next front, which will once again clip by the Northern Caribbean with slightly cooler air once we get into next week, but it will bring us a better chance of showers, rain showers for some of us. Let me show you that right here. So here we are in the Caribbean, that first front roll by, I'll zoom down into Canada in just a second, the cooler air back behind it, but keeping an eye on this as our next system starts to build over toward uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, even some snow eventually as we get into uh, late today into tomorrow in the panhandle of Texas, this system is going to be more to the south, which means it will clip us in the Northern Caribbean and give us that better chance of rain. Watch this. This here is by Sunday. We could even see some severe storms. North, uh, South Carolina, Georgia, parts of Florida, especially North Florida, with that chance of some stronger thunderstorms, but that front dipping all the way down through Central America. So watch as we get into Monday, we get that increased chance of rain coming out of the Southeast U.S., but scattered showers, Bahamas, Cuba, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, and then right through Belize, Honduras, even Guatemala, the rain chance may pick up a little bit. So watching out for these scattered showers. And then as we get into Tuesday of the upcoming week, that front clips by Haiti and the Dominican Republic and uh, Jamaica, still some scattered showers. And then watching that core of rain that will be near Bermuda. And then at that point, we'll be watching out for that next system that will be starting to develop off to the west. Now today, the tail end of the system has moved through Bermuda. That's moved off to the east, but still watching the rain and the snow on the backside. I've been mentioning this for us in eastern Canada, Thursday and Friday, yesterday and today. It would be very active, it is. And then a little system splitting Bermuda and Nova Scotia. This will clip by as we get into Saturday night, Sunday morning, uh, the Avalon Peninsula. It may get a little snow, may get a little rain as that moves away. And then we'll be monitoring Sunday, this next system over toward the southeast U.S. Seas are super high. Look at these bright colors. 
right near Bermuda, lifting up toward Canada with that uh, storm system that moved by. As we move forward into the weekend, watching uh, near the Bahamas and some of the passageways into the Atlantic for those elevated seas. This here is by Sunday, and then you get over to the Bay of Campeche. Things are going to start to build over toward the Gulf. And then you see the Atlantic waters here, Southeast US. This is by Monday and a Tuesday. This is with that next system that will be rolling in. We'll watch out for those elevated seas, especially early next week again. Now, rain chances just kind of rolling through these totals. If you do get some rain, uh, the rain uh, chances are low, so the totals would stay low. Almost everything is staying uh, well below an inch of rain. Could get a spotty shower, maybe a quarter of an inch of rain around Puerto Rico, British and U.S. Virgin Islands. It's going to be hit or miss Dominica, Barbados, St. Lucia, Trinidad, Grenada, St. Vincent, the Grenadines. This here is where there's a little bit more. Guyana and Suriname, though, some spots could get two inches of rain or 50 millimeters of rain. And once again, throughout much of Central America, the rain chance just not very high. Generally dry in much of uh, Texas and Mexico, but as we get into northern sections of Texas with this next system building, there'll be that chance of snow and rain in some spots. So the rain chance about 30% today for us in Jamaica, a 40% chance for tomorrow. Next couple of days, we're mainly dry across the uh, Cayman Islands. Rain chance stays very low for us in uh, Trinidad. 20% chance of a shower in Barbados. You see that rain chance is not high. The next two days, St. Lucia, a 30% chance of a shower. Just that 20% chance, mainly dry in Grenada, mainly dry the next few days. Same thing in the Grenadines. 20 to 30% chance in Martinique a 30% chance the next couple of days of a passing shower in Dominica. Rain chance through the weekend in Guadalupe at 30% and a 30% chance in Antigua and Barbuda, mainly dry as we get into the upcoming weekend. Beautiful weather, St. Kitts, Nevis and Montserrat for the weekend. Gorgeous Anguilla and St. Bart's, a 30% chance of a shower today, St. Martin, Saba and Stacia. Rain chance holds at 30%. Isolated showers, there'll be a few around for us in Puerto Rico, giving you that heads up. 20 to 30% chance U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Bahamas were mainly dry and again on the colder side this morning. Rain chance 10 to 20%. Turks and Caicos, 30% chance of a shower in the Dominican Republic. And that rain chance very low across Haiti, generally on the dry side. Rain chance staying small in Belize. Next week, that rain chance will start to bump up. Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire, 10 maybe 20% chance of a shower, but we get toward Guyana, Guyana and Suriname. That's where we have that elevated chance of rain. Suriname, a 70% chance of rain. Isolated flooding today. Colder start right across Cuba today. 30% chance of a shower, Costa Rica and Panama. Just a 20% chance the next couple of days in Nicaragua and a 20% chance in Honduras. Better chance again early next week. Mainly dry the next couple of days, Guatemala, El Salvador. We are dry in Mexico City. That rain chance stays on the very small side over toward Merida. We're on the uh, dry side, same thing Cancun. Rain chance stays small in Colombia. 30% chance of an isolated shower in northern Venezuela. And now in Bermuda, that front is off to the east. We're off to a colder start. So a new system starting to form in the United States that will give us an increased chance of rain in parts of the Caribbean, especially Monday into Tuesday of next week. Keep an eye on hurricane season. I covered more on this uh, as well in some previous videos and monitoring that earthquake activity that I'm always keeping an eye on. Hurricane season starts June 1st. Thank you for being with me. Have a wonderful day ahead.